Today we're looking at the patch notes for patch 7.5 final boss. And along with that we're also going to look at the update notes for Witch of the Woods bonus balance, which is what comes out before the actual 7.5 comes out, but basically includes all the balance changes in between, which they both always talk about in the patch notes show. We're not going to do the whole patch notes show today because it's very late here and I want to do it this way instead because it's a bit more effective for me, a bit quicker, because otherwise I would be doing both. But with the time right now, with it being 5 in the morning for me, I figured this way should work. And with that, let's jump right into the update. We don't really need to look at the skins here too much because I already made a video about all of them, because they were all teased. So I'm just going to play the voice packs here real quick. Here's how a superior being does it. Now that I can choose my own path, I choose revenge. I'm loving that one. I love that effect. This world needs a new apex predator. Science is a wonder. One I will use to spread destruction. Hey, a German voice pack. Kind of. <laughs> All right, so bonus balance is going to get a lot of different stuff. The first one here is a map balance. I don't even need to go into detail on this. This is very simple. It makes it so that, especially in late game, the fire minions and... Yeah, the, the fire minions are not as tanky as they are at the moment because that's a huge issue, especially in Duel. A lot of Duel players have talked about that, so those are going to be tuned back. And that brings us to the god balance already. So, Baba Yaga <laughs> was an interesting case. So she's going to see some more changes. Baba Yaga is seeing damage increases to her ability 2 and 4, as well as increased projectile speed on her 4. Something that a lot of people have been asking for from the start. I was already asking for this on PTS, but initially Hyrus was hesitant. And now I guess they want people to see how strong she really is. So Baba's Brew increased the damage from 55 to 215 to 65 to 225. Not a massive increase, but keep in mind, sometimes you can fire too. And the scaling increased from 60% to 70%. So we're going to make this a little bit more of a damaging tool. Makes it a little bit harder because uh, hit harder because... She often feels like her combo is a bit unrewarding. And Home Sweet Home increased the burst damage from 60 to 160 to 75 to 195. Quite a fair bit here. And increased the burst damage scaling from 30 to 35%. And then increased the burn damage scaling from 10% to 12.5%. De decreased the travel time of Witchfire Vault from 0.8 seconds to 0.53 seconds. And a 10% magical power scaling to the amount of shield HP gained at all ranks. Uh, two things that I think really important here. The base damage value here obviously is nice as well. I think the burst damage means it's the... No, the initial crash is more damage. So it should be per projectile then, I'm guessing. I'll actually check that right now so I don't tell you anything wrong. But I'm pretty sure that should be per projectile because 160 sounds too low for the initial damage. Yes, so it's per projectile. That's actually quite a lot then. So we're talking 160 extra per projectile times four. No, sorry, we're talking 35 extra project, per projectile times four. So extra uh, 140 if you hit all four of them. And that's going to be a lot easier because the travel time is decreased. I think with the travel time decrease, they didn't even need the damage increase. The damage of the ability is good when it actually lands on enemies. So I'm, I'm surprised they did both here. And the scaling here is going to be really nice. So it makes you feel... Uh, more tanky, especially if you invest into power. And that's the thing. Before, and you had synergy with protections and I guess to some degree even with health, but not with magical power. And now there's more of a reward for going into magical power and still getting more tankiness out of it with your ultimate. So very interesting. I still hope that they change up the two from how it currently works because it still feels horrible to me, but that's going to make it feel a lot stronger, especially with the glitch of her ult hopefully being completely fixed soon. Heimdall gets different changes, uh, different nerfs as well. He's just still doing relatively well and he's still being banned a lot as well. His piercing sight has a decreased vision radius from 120 to 80, which I guess especially increase, uh, decreases safety in Conquest. And through the realms, decreased initial hit from 150 to 510 to 120 to 440. Quite a fair bit of the damage here. And then the scaling also decreased from 90 to 70%. So we'll see a lot less damage coming from that. I think overall that are those are fair nerfs for Heimdall. I don't think that's going to make him unviable or something. Uh, yeah, and I think a lot of people still 
have problems with him with how he is. Horus, uh, <laughs> uh, he had a bit of a thing where in competitive, his ultimate was used for, for strategies where they basically moved across the whole map over to Fire Giant, uh, I think which was played on the current patch as well. And yeah, there's been a lot of strats that working around that ultimate. So they're nerfing the ultimate again, uh, decreasing the movement speed Horus gains from 135% uh, to 70%. I think it's very unfortunate. I think it's it was a fun added feature. I actually didn't have the chance to try it myself. I'm going to try it before this goes through. But I can see that, especially in competitive, it led to some issues and, and, and ranked apparently as well. His win rate still falls behind, uh, which is interesting. So we we'll, might see uh, some other changes later on. Because he also got another buff along with this. This was not the only buff that he got in the, in the previous patch. So I think it's uh, overall fair. I, I'd like to see some other buffs to him if... His win rate still is relatively low. Hun Bats, in a, another competitive pick especially, though he's also picked and ranked a lot and everything, so he gets nerfs the infused strikes, decreased empowered basic attack from 20% to 15%. That's not that noticeable in most situations, I think, but then again, compared to his old passive, I think it will be noticeable. Uh, Fear No Evil increased cooldown from 100 to 120. That is a huge nerf for him. Obviously, you're going to go into a fair bit of cooldown reduction, typically with Hunbats, but still, 20 seconds on top. Most of the other ults of this type, I think, are, are global ults, as far as I'm aware. I actually don't know the exact numbers from what I've got from the top of my head here, but... Oof. I, I can see why it's happening at the moment. I think it's somewhat unfortunate still. Hmm... Because I think there would have been other ways to make him more effective in in other angles, and nerfing the while well, nerfing the ultimate at the same time instead of just nerfing him down. Uh, because Honbats at the end of the day revolves a lot around his ultimate. His two and three are nice, but they're nothing to you know base a kit on. And his escape is simultaneously his his other CC, so that's a bit of a well, of an issue, I guess, in a way. So really, he is his ultimate in many ways, and if you nerf the ultimate, then you kind of want to offset that, because otherwise it may lead to him suffering a lot. We'll see how it develops, because he might still be valid and competitive, but especially in, in ranked and stuff, I think he might fall off a fair bit. Merlin. Still getting uh, complaints. Overall, still a very strong guard. It's, it's been like that since he came out, basically. Blizzard, decreased scaling from, per take from 20% to 15%. Hits up to 8 times, so total scaling decreased from 160% to 120%. That is a lot. 40% scaling off is massive. Dragonfire, reduced max stacks of protection reduction from 8 to 6. Decreased max scaling per take from 20 to 15%. Hits up to 13 times total, so total scaling decreased from 260% to 195%. So massive scale and nerfs for Merlin here. Uh, which I think are going to be very interesting to see how, how much of an impact they have. They should have a pretty solid impact because Merlin is just a late game high damage guard and that's hitting exactly that spot. Good nerfs might even be a bit too much, but we'll have to see. Uh, well, especially regarding objectives and stuff as well, how, how quick you can burn them afterwards. So we'll find out, but uh, definitely a lot less scaling here on, on the... Blizzard especially, and typically you're not going to take all of the hits anyways. Odin. Odin's rework, still one of those more controversial things, I would say. Not as controversial as Bastet, but uh, some people seem to really not like it. Uh, I personally still like it, but, well. He needs some nerfs, apparently. Lunch. Increase cooldown from 15 to 11 seconds to 16 to 12 seconds. Raven Shout increased cooldown from 15 to 11 seconds to 16 to 12 seconds. Still matching, so I guess it goes hand in hand. And then Gangnir's Might increased cooldown from 12 seconds to 14 seconds. I think this one is the more important one, really, because that was on a lower cooldown and that could have quite an impact. I am okay with these nerves, even though I gotta say, personally, I haven't seen all too much of Odin as of late. I've seen a few, but not nothing like overwhelming. I haven't caught up on all the pro games yet. Maybe there's something going on there. I'll find out soon. 
Sobek. Sobek has risen from the Nile after his, H his boost in HP and self-healing. Uh, HP scaling, sorry. So he's getting a nerf. Blessing of Nile changed to per level scaling from 10 per stack to 4 plus 0.3 per level, meaning at level 20 it would still be 10 per stack. That's a huge nerf to his early game, and he's an aggressive early game guard, so this is especially huge for him. Uh, I think he's getting up to 30 protection, I think it's 3 procs maximum, and that's gonna hit him hard. And I don't know if if that hard of a nerf was necessary to offset the potential that the buff had, but it is what it is. Not quite happy with this one, I think this could have been a softer nerf than this, but hey, we'll see how he does afterwards. Thor. And we'll have done decreased power scaling from 100% to 90%. Small nerf, but can have a relatively significant impact on uh, team fights when he drops down and hits multiple targets. So, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Still a strong guard. Not gonna break him. So, all good. Ulr has performed gloriously lately with Skyrim popularity in high end ranked and competitive scenes. Yeah, we've seen him as like the primary uh, transcendence hunter that's still there, whereas everyone else is just a devil's hunter now. And he gets um, a nerf to bladed arrow, decreased base damage of bladed arrow from 90 to 90 to 80 to 280, and a mana cost from 50 to 70. I think the mana cost is actually what's gonna hit all the harder here. 10 damage here, yeah, but not being able to spam your kit as much, that's a bigger deal. Hell of arrows increased mana cost from 60 to 60 to 80. Same thing here. So he is gonna have to chill a little bit on pressuring in lane. Uh, and I think that is going to have an impact of some sorts. <laughs> Sorry, there's one of my cats scratching at the door. And uh, Yemoja is next. She is also, I'm expecting, getting some tweaks maybe or nerves. Let's read. This unique healer guardian is defined by her ability to cast her abilities repeatedly. Oh, that sounds great. We do not plan to add any specific rules to change this, but we can limit how many abilities she can cast by slowing down the gain of her Omi. We are combining that with another base damage enough to a primary damaging ability to ensure your motor deals less damage even when building no magical power. Okay. Increase the level at which Emoja gains additional Omi levels from 4 to and 12 to 6 and 14. Ah, I see. It is a nerf. And an understandable one, actually. I don't think it, it should be, you know, it should be level 12 in the first place. So four, 6, 14 makes a lot more sense. Pre-ultimate also doesn't make a lot of sense. And Bouncing Bubble decreased base damage from 40 to 200 to 40 to 180. Nothing major here, just a little bit uh, off the top again. But I think this is what we're going to see with Jumoja. Maybe some more gradual nerfs and then maybe some tweaks, tweaks adjustments in, in either direction. Uh, maybe pushing some of the abilities more in favor of nerfing the one a little bit or nerfing the two even, I don't know. But I think she's getting to a better place overall and I think that's that's good. And that brings us to the second part, which is the final boss update notes. So here we have quite a few more skins. Um, should we look at them? I think you can see them like this. I think I don't read really, it. Well, maybe, maybe we, just, we just take a, a closer look at these ones. So the first one is an is a Baba Yaga skin, Elder Jin. This looks pretty cool, I gotta say. I really like this design. And the next one here is Who's for? I didn't see the name. Guan Yu, oh my god, that is amazing. This has super, super dark side aesthetics. Xbox Game Pass this month, I think. Dark Siders 3. This looks like Dark Siders 1 or 2 though. I love it. Especially because I love Guan Yu as well. This is absolutely fantastic. I am a huge fan of that. And then we have another Medusa skin. We literally have all. I think this is the. I think this must be the fourth one of the Medusa skins from the tier. The, there was a, the, a tier five contest for Medusa back in the day, uh, where she had a skin with four different forms: poison, fire, ice, and I forgot the last one. Uh, I think the the nebula type, it's like the the star or something, and I think she has all of the skins from that <laughs> from that concept now. I I don't know if she, why does she need so many skins. She has so many good skins, but well, we're gonna listen to the voice packs as well. So many wishes to fulfill, so many ways to corrupt them. Oh, this is gonna be so interesting with her pot. I I really like that. 
A great darkness is spreading, and I shall see it done. Yes. 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 This is my skin. Ah, oh, this one doesn't have a voice line yet. I really want to know how that when you or what he says when he uses one, when he uses heal. Because it's not gonna be I will not let you fall. <laughs> Here we got Hades, Hercules, and oh my god, we got the Omega oh skin. Okay. Hades, the Legion. Ooh, this looks good. I wanna see the I wanna see the full model for this one, but so far this looks really good. Wait, I'm gonna make myself a bit smaller so you can uh, actually see that a little bit more. I dig it. And then the Hercules skin, same theme. Oh, that's that's such a cool style. It's like um, maybe a bit Dark Souls, maybe a bit uh, what's it called? World of Warcraft, Undead Capital City. All those is it Apothecary or something? I don't know. And then we got Yomun Gun <laughs> as Long Cat. Another dead meme, but a good one. I I dig it. Let's see if we have voice packs. Many have tried, but none have successfully come close to vanquishing me. The countless souls I contain curse the living, screaming for their destruction. I simply oblige them. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm looking for my friend Sashimi Neko. He's chonky and smells like tuna. Have you seen him? <laughs> this is such a Tina voice pack. 100%. All right, and that, ooh, what's this? Another Space Chang'a skin? Okay, we have, oh, I'm looking at the last one. Chang'a, Scylla, and Naja. Chang'a, I, didn't, I wouldn't even recognize this one as Chang'a if it didn't say Chang'a. Uh, I don't really know why she needs another space-themed skin, but interesting, could be, could be cool. Not sure. Scylla as, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> That's this is for the cutesy crowd. Is it just cutesy Scylla? No, it must be something else. Some bunny, bunny ears, okay. But this one, the what's it called? It's a Najaskin. It looks so cool. I love it. Galaxy Merrick. It's another galaxy themed skin. This looks so cool. Okay, voice packs. Be safe, be careful, but be bold. I swear this gives me a new Waskin wipes. So just... Hippity boppity boop! Or is it boo? Uh, I can't get the spell wrong this time. Why am I so forgetful? My ears. This plane of existence is surging with powerful beings. Should be interesting. Nice. But but the winner of this patch is definitely the going you. 100%. Okay. So we got the final boss battle pass. Oh, that's where the, these are coming from. So I'm assuming... Oh, we can, we can actually look here. This one's battle pass. Bao Yaga's battle pass. Guan Yu's battle pass. Oh my god, this is going to be the 41, is it? Ugh. Medusa's battle pass. And Legion Hades' battle pass. And then... Oh, that's, I thought those two would be together. Hercules and Yomun Gandalf's Grim Omens. Changda and Bunny Silla's also Grim Omens. So I'm going to skip the Grim Omens, but... Oh, they put him in a chest. Najas in the galaxy hero chest. Okay, so that is the stuff that we have here. And then we have a new battle pass changes. Okay, let's read through them. Victory in battle chest. We've received a grand deal of feedback that, the, mm, that they're not rewarding enough, not satisfying, blah, 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 blah. They give too many boosters and everything. Yep, I got it. Uh, they think that the... Battle Pass is still an extremely attractive deal for the amount of content at the current gem price, even if these chests provide one or less sk per, uh, skin per player per pass. To avoid frustrations, we've removed Victory and Battle Chest from the Battle Pass. We've replaced them with five new cosmetic themed chests. Battle Cosmetic Chest, Avatar Chest, Battle Skin Chest, Battle Voice Pack Chest, and Battle Emote Chest. Many level rewards have been adjusted to replace chests with Team Booster Packs. What? Oh, so we're going to get more team boosters in the leveling. Each level tells the players what booster types they can unlock and how many. Chest type will clearly be labeled from the track and will 100% grant an item from each chest type. However, if you own all the items from the chest, you will roll a three-day account booster. Each chest contains the following items from previous events, uh, chests or updates. These chests have no new items in each battle pass. So you have the cosmetics with jump stamps, blah, blah, blah. All the cosmetic stuff. And then you have the emotes. 
then you have the voice packs and then you that, so this is interesting so you might not want to buy all voice packs anymore if you're currently doing that if you're getting a battle pass anyways because you're just gonna get them from chests that's interesting and then we have the battle avatar chest and the skin chest for tier 3 and tier 4 skins okay so that's changed out so now you'll know what you're getting at least ui home screen improvement okay i just want to see that in game it's just gonna be various visual things cleaning up some stuff uh, i could be good depending on how it's executed we find out chat improvements now displays two lines of chat without interaction that will fade away automatically after a few seconds thank god that was so annoying that it was always hidden and some better overviews for the uh, esports hub as well it's also cool and uh, info for how to play the 10 free guards i like it when they add stuff to learn to have even though i don't think that many people check it out we have a bunch of bug fixes here that we are just gonna gloss over because most of them are probably a specific situation today fix the fire giant issue that was uh, abused in the pro league baba yaga gets a whole set of fixes so hopefully hopefully these things um Okay, so they're saying that Baba's Bruce issues and Home Sweet Home issues are still being investigated. So even after she gets her buffs and everything, uh, these bugs may still happen from time to time. Then we have uh, fixes for other guards and we have a new ranked split. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, <clears throat> we have a lot about uh, preserving matchmaking rating, better matchmaker, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so turning ranked so we have more variants around returning rank place we have more variants around gold that's all that mm. so it seems okay we're opting the mr for required for muscle better reflect the change ensuring that only two percent can obtain percent of players can obtain this rank so apparently they are saying it was too easy to gain a rank a master's rank master's mmr place will also be softly reset place above 2525 mmr we'll see the mmr pull towards that 2525 uh higher mmr place will still be able uh, still be higher after the soft reset but closer to that okay so interesting so they really want to reduce the number of masters players the amount of software sets is lighter than previous splits in fact only two percent players which should preserve matchmaking quality for all ranked players no wait are they claiming that previously no previously they already said they said huh? okay this is just weird i was gonna say it doesn't make much sense with the next paragraph Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to dig through all of that here in detail. Uh, whatever. This, so, we're just going to go at the, uh, the at the final steps here. Uh, increase MR cap from 3,250 to 3,500. So, higher high, uh, per end. Update the MR values associated with each tier division to be better represent the distribution. So, gold is better around the average MMR. And uh, previously, there were more players in gold 1 and 2 and less in gold 4 and 5. And Master Spread lines up with only having 2% of the players above 2,522. Okay, so no, it makes sense then. All right. So instead of having 4 to 5% of the players in Masters, it's only supposed to be 2%, and that's what they're going to try and shift it towards. And people still get a bit of a soft reset here, so that uh, it's not that easy to reclaim Grandmasters, or that there's more competition going on. Uh, if you have low variance, then that'll be reset to, 20, uh, to 37%. Uh, leaderboards for guards will not reset next split it, they will next split is mid-season uh, duo q mmr range of players below diamond is increased from 300 to 500 that's quite a lot 500 difference between two players okay and for diamond above it's from 100 to 250 that makes more sense because it was weirdly blocked off there sometimes but 500 below a player of 1500 mmr queuing with a 2000 mmr player that's not that's not the same but okay, interesting changes. We are now moving over to the item changes. Jade Emperor's Crown increased cost from 2150 to 2000, uh, from 2100 to 2150, decreased physical protection from 60 to 50. Uh, solo lane shift, I think, heavily towards Yaman Gander 
is often built and yeah fair enough such a weird niche item that i can absolutely see that and runic shield kind of the, the opposite here uh, decreased magical power reduction from 50 to 40 which is actually especially interesting with uh you know previously like fully counted boots and we're long gone from that and decreased hp from 200 to 150 okay still gonna be good i think but maybe not quite as mandatory of a pickup as it is at the moment artemis whoa <laughs> a lot going on here caledonian boar decreased warm-up time from one second to 0.7 seconds Increased delay between charges from 0.5 seconds to 0.6 seconds. Barely noticeable, barely noticeable though. The additional responsiveness from the changes below makes this feel similar to its current timing. Added additional effects when spawning to see where Tusky is. Added a warm-up target for the initial charge so allies and enemies can see its range and timing. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Tusky has gone AI improvement, uh, undergone AI improvements. But by the way, this won't matter much as long as any of your allies still run, runs into the range because it's only for the initial charge. Uh, fix an issue where Tusky would not charge the target at max range. Fix an issue where Tusky would ignore targets who were selected in the frontal cone. Fix an issue where Tusky would freeze between charges for a significant amount of time. Tusky now better understands when people enter and leave line of sight. Okay, let's see how that feels afterwards. Kernanos. Shift of Seasons, Autumn now reduces magical protection in addition to physical. Cool. That's a... Uh, I don't know if it does much, but it's, inter it's an interesting idea at least. Let's see what, if, it, if it is useful in some situations. Though I'm not a fan of even more reduction being in the game, I think this is a, one of those places where it's actually interesting. Could be cool in teamfight. Chang'e, Moonflower Dance increased magical power scaling from 50 to 60%. I like I like Chang'e buffs. I think it's cool when Chang'e can do a little more. So I'm I'm happy. And then we have Mulan. Cross strike mastery bonus increased from five percent to ten percent attack speed. Uh, that's actually fair enough because the one like attack speed, out of all the values compared to the movement speed under the, the power, that was just yeah, it's alright. But ten percent is actually quite a fair bit. So it might be more worth to look towards leveling the one earlier. They'll probably still prefer leveling the two because she's ability based mostly. Nike, barrier formation. Nike is now knockback immune while channeling. I did not realize that she was not. I always assumed because it's channeled that she would be knockback immune. Huh. Makes me realize that I haven't played against a Nike when I was playing a knockback god because otherwise I would have noticed. But. Well. Now I will no longer notice because I think I'm wondering how many channels there are in the game that, that, that don't have knockback immunity because it's almost always well uh, okay there are some but it's not really not that many and this one seemed with the shielding area it seemed like it is cool and Ram huh Ram doesn't have a passive okay now this is gonna be big Astro Quiver. This ability now includes every Astro Strike Arrow Ram Lens has a percent chance at an Astral Arrow pickup will appear on the ground. Drop chance is 30% plus one per level, so up to 50%. Additionally, picking up an arrow heals 10 mana. Which was essentially what the function of the two was beforehand. So, pick me up rename to Infinite Arrows. Remove drop chance for an arrow pickup from this ability. Added, while this buff is active, every third successful hit on an enemy will immediately gen generate an astral arrow. So if you have more attack speed, then in the time frame of this buff, you will also generate more astral arrows. Cool. Interesting mechanic, especially in combination with the astral quiver 50% ch drop chance, like basically in three shots you should get at least two arrows back then if you pick one up and you get one from this and then rolling assault you can cancel this ability after rolling cool also something that i always found weird i i, I mean you can just shoot the arrow but hey increased physical power scaling of 25 percent to the arrow what increased physical 
power scaling of 25% to the arrow shot bonus damage. So by 25%? Not sure what that's meant to say. Huh, well. And Astral Barrage. Every time round generates or picks up an Astral Arrow, the cooldown of this ability is reduced by 0.2 seconds. Ooh. Includes passive regeneration, picked up deployables, and generated arrows to extend. Wait. Passive generation and picked up deployables? Hold on a second. But you have to pick it up from the passive. Oh, that's that's a bit redundant then. This is, these two are the same thing now, but hey. Okay, I'll take it. That's interesting. Well, okay, but but five arrows are just one second, so it's not going to be super massive most of the time. But it does mean he can use it a fair bit more often. I think this is really interesting. I I think it's a really strong buff to him. Because you also get like the Astral Quiver on level 1 instead of level 2 now. So it's the, the, the pickup. Mm. But it, may, it's, it sounds fun. It sounds like fun mechanics. But I am concerned that it's going to make him very, very strong. Oh, but I like it. I, I still like it. I want to see how this plays out. Raven. A Demon King has fallen off favor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, base damage of Prana Onslaught increased from 80 to 300 to 90 to 310. That's not going to bring him back. <laughs> it's going to help us clear a little bit, I guess. I don't know if there's any situation where it like, takes on the harpies or something, but it's not going to... This is not enough to bring him back, guys. Ymir is here. Ymir need, need buff. Oh my god, okay. This entire... Okay, should I read it? I'm going really to read it. Ymir is here. Ymir need buff. Not do so well lately. Ice wall can help team, but also hurt team. So I destroy now. Ymir old not fair sometimes. I try hard to deal damage, but still die. So now I deal damage every time. Thanks for play, Ymir. Bye bye. All right. Ice Wall. Ymir can now refire this ability to destroy the wall early. He can refire this while under the effects of CC or while dead. This ability now goes on cooldown after only after the wall dies. Oh, so there are benefits to breaking it that way as well. Uh, decreased cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 down to 8 seconds? What? What? 8 seconds! Wait, okay, I guess it's because it's partially offset by the fact that the, cool, the ability only goes on cooldown after you cancel it. Yeah. Alright. Makes sense. Still, sounds big. Like... If you, if you manage to block someone off just, just right at the beginning of him, ultimate, like, say you want to block off a Mercury ult, you just pop down the wall, uh, stop the Mercury, and break the wall down because the ult stopped, and afterwards you don't really care anymore. Uh, then you have it on an 8 second cooldown. Some cooldown reaction even less, and you're going you're gonna to be spamming walls. Cool. Interesting. Scary. Shards of Ice. If you meet dice while chaining this, you will still deal damage with his cone amount charged. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Uh... I guess. I don't think that's gonna... It has applications, but I don't think it's gonna be, like, massive in terms of what it does, so... Yeah. Uh, there's bigger things and smaller things. I think the, the ice wall is the big thing here, and that's very interesting. I don't know why my... my, my uh, thing is lagging so much right now. What's going on here? Uh, and then we have Zeus. Zeus gets a change to Aegis Assault. Increased static damage from 50 to 90 to 55 to 95. Again, I don't really see how this is going to be doing that much. I mean, it helps us clear. Depending on how many hits you get on it, it might be somewhat useful. But overall, it's like, yeah, okay. Not going to not gonna bring Zeus back in a meta of Merlin's. Except that Merlin's nerfed now, so maybe it will. <laughs> All right, and that's it for the patch notes. Uh, some very interesting stuff here. A lot of unexpected guard changes, I gotta say. The, the ones in the bonus balance were more expected, but the ones that, that come in the patch itself are actually very surprising to me, but not unwelcome for the most part. So um, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this played out. I'm, I was actually kind of expecting that we might see some Kuzumbur nerfs. 
after the very drastic buffs. So far, that's not the case. We'll see if that happens later. And I don't know if it's going to happen, but there might be another announcement on the patch notes. I might do a separate video on that uh, on the show that's not in these notes. We'll see about that. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel the sub button with the bell. It really helps me out. And other than that, see you for the next one soon. Duke's Loth, out.